In this tutorial, we're going to continue our development by creating an idle shaft right here um, that's not going to be driven by a motor. Here, from our last tutorial, uh, we basically are using a DC motor to drive a, a dual sprocket cylinder, but our next cylinder is simply going to hold the chain and keep it taut in this area. The way that we're gonna do that is we're going to start with a new part, new design, and what I want to do is look at this um, from the right plane. I'm going to start a sketch on the YZ plane. And within this sketch, uh, let's start off with just a line here. And I want to set the midpoint of the line to the midpoint of the part. And I'm going to set a dimension here to be, uh, let's say, 2.245 and I'm going to add 30 thousandths and we're going to see why in a little in a minute um, this dimension is related to our assembly so if I come back to my assembly I can just show you very quick why I chose that dimension um, that dimension is basically this face on the roller chain going all the way to the face on the other side of the roller chain so the distance between uh, the two faces is 2.245 and I added 30 thousandths um, to have a little bit extra room. We're gonna see a little bit more about that um, in a minute here. So um, with that being said, uh, the next dimension that we wanna make is we want to um, draw upward and this is gonna be 0 0.075 for now. And I'm going to come across and make this maybe 0.1 inches. And once I create that, I'm going to come down. And we're just going to finish this off by basically uh, placing this. Um, you know what? We can actually move this whole thing. Let me delete this. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm going to move my sketch up. Now let's create another line here on the origin and just like I did before I'm just gonna set this to be the midpoint I can make this a construction line and let me just move this onto here okay um, and let me set a couple dimensions so like I said before this is 0.075 and this is 0 0.1 0 0.1 inches okay great so uh, we're a little bit closer to what we want now. So from here, what we want to do is we want to set a dimension um, from this line to here. And what this dimension is, is basically the, um, the diameter. It's going to be the diameter. So I'm going to set this to be 0.8 divided by 2. And that's going to be halfway. Now let me draw this upward, connect it. Let me connect these two points here. Okay. And uh, this isn't fully constrained, as you can see. There are some dimensions that aren't fully constrained. Um, what we want to do is we, we want to set this point to be a midpoint with this. Um, so we're going to have to do that using a line. Basically, I can click on the center point, drag up. I can make this construction. And I can set this line and this line to be uh, midpoint with each other. And what we can do from here is we can just... Um, copy the sketch we have on the other side. So I'm going to line this up. And I'm going to set a dimension here. Whoops. I'm going to set a dimension here to be 0.1. And now what I can do is I can uh, close this. I'm going to have to. So I'm, this isn't construction anymore. And as you can see, I still need another dimension here. I can just make these horizontal. I can make these two points horizontal with each other. And uh, just for reference, you know, if, if you feel like I'm going a little bit too fast, I have uh, a tutorial video on how to get started with Autodesk Fusion, uh, as well as a couple other tutorials that you might want to go through before you get to this. This is a little bit more advanced. Um, so we're going to come to Solid, and we're going to come to Revolve. And this is going to be our axis right here. And that's going to rotate our part um, into 3D. So I'm going to hit OK. And for right now, um, we need to create a hole in here. 
So I can, I can either choose to do that using the whole command, and I can just set this right on the origin, the whole, and I can drag this out uh, throughout the entire part. I can make the distance all, and what I can also do is I can change the diameter to be instead of 0.4, I can make it say 0.2, uh, depending on, on what it really needs to be. And as you can see, you know, that hole has been made. Uh, we're going to eventually have to put a screw that goes all the way through this with a, with a washer to hold this onto the rest of the assembly. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it the, um, I'm just going to call it spindle for now. I can always change the name later. And uh, I can call it idler, idler spindle. You can always change that name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Sorry, you can't right. There's no right click. Uh, <laughs> um, what we have to do is we have to drag this into the part. Now I'm, I'm used to other software where you can right click and just hit copy and paste it, but I'm not exactly sure you can really do that in Fusion. So we're going to come to show data panel. And from here, I'm going to click on idler spindle and I'm just going to drag it in. And that's going to drag in the part as we've done many times before. Now I'm going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees. Oh, that's the wrong 90 degrees. I have to rotate it back 90 degrees. So let me rotate this 90. And that's where we want it to be. So now I can kind of drag this into place. And if we look at this from the front, you can see the way that it's going to interact with the part. So um, let me let me kind of drag this to here. I can come to display settings and I can change the visual style to be wireframe with hidden edges. And so as you can see, uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of visualize what's going on here. So I'm, I'm going to sit this about here. And you can tell... Um, You can tell that the wall that I've created here, um, it's a little bit hard to see, but this inner circle is is dotted, and that's the um, that's the solid uh, cylinder that's going to touch the chain. But this outer wall, basically, what it does is it stops the it stops it from falling off. Oh, let me change the display settings going to make it shaded. So basically that wall is going to stop the chain from falling off. So as you can see, um, that wall, it doesn't come up so close that it touches the red pieces. It doesn't touch the red rivets in the roller chain. What it's doing is it's just kind of keeping the cylinder attached to the part uh, so that way it doesn't fall off of the chain. And there's a balance here. The, the higher you make the wall, the easier it is to touch that roller chain. And we don't want that to happen. So that being said, um, we're going to design it like this for now. And we're, we're going to see really what happens. But, um, you know, there's only so much that you can really tell from a 3D model. Uh, a 3D model isn't going to give you all the information you need. Sometimes you would just have to... Um, you know, create a model as accurately as possible and um, do some 3D prints and, and hope that those 3D prints work and do some prototyping and then eventually go to production. It's, it's not, it's not going to, um, it's not going to give you all the information you need all the time. And this is one of those scenarios where we're, we're guessing that this is going to work just based off dimensions. I know that the wall here, the height of it, it's not high enough to touch these. So we're, we're going to have to see how that works out for us. So that is our cylinder. It's an idler cylinder. And it just is going to roll with our driving motor here. This is our driving motor. And our idler is here. 